Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how Tango the blue and gold macaw is actually fearful of flying around other macaws. So we had a dual purpose here and the first thing that I did was I actually set David and Ashlyn and their macaw Tango up to fail. Now I know that Tango doesn't like flying around other macaws. He does do it outdoors. If you see Tango's playlist on my channel, you will see that he is an outdoor free flyer and he does come on our flight trips. However, he usually does take a different approach or a different path when flying to avoid the other macaws. So here we are about to release Tango for a simple A to B, which he's capable of in a new environment. And I release my Camelot Macaw Tusa. As you can see, it immediately startles Tango and he's up on top. Now you may be wondering, why did I set them up to fail in the first place? Well, Honestly, I wanted to show that there was actually a problem. If we had started from the very beginning, it would have never looked like Tango is actually fearful of flying around another macaw. So as you can see, he's up at the top. We try to coax him down. One of the problems, one of the issues the, and reasons why he's not coming down is because Tusa is flying back and forth. Now, the other dual reason that I am doing this session is for Marvin the green wing macaw. As you can see, Marvin is just hanging out, chilling on a tea stand over there. He's completely calm, just watching what's going on. And this is kind of a way to desensitize him and get him used to other macaws flying and kind of show him what's in store for him in the future when his wings fully molt out and grow back in and he can fly. Now Tango hangs out for a while. We eventually stop flying to said to encourage Tango to come on down which of course he does. And I only pushed him to this extent because I knew what he was capable of. Hey, hey what's up? Yeah, you about. need to come in or out? Can't leave the door. Tango. What? Okay. Can you shut that door, please? Shut that door, please. Ooh. Really? What a song that. She's yeah. not. Tango. <laughs> So now that Tango's back down, we decide to start from a very easy place, and that is some simple and close proximity A to Bs. The key to really getting these awesome flights from Tango is that we are not flying any of the other birds. So Tusa, we are keeping completely still on our hands. We're not letting him fly. And Marvin, of course, is not trying to fly. So although Tango is still doing these great A to Bs, he doesn't have to worry about another bird being in the air. The next step is adding Tusa. We let Tango fly, then I send Tusa to Dave. So they are on opposite sides. And as you can see, Tango already has it in him that he is going to land on his person. And so sending Tusa after Tango has already taken flight helps in getting Tango to still stick to his flight pattern while getting used to flying with another bird in the air and understanding that that bird is not going to hurt him. From there, we slowly increase when we send Tusa and eventually build up to being able to send Tusa at the exact same time that Tango decides to fly. So I've sped up this footage for you guys to see how many recalls and repetitions that we are able to do. And we are actually even sending Tusa from a further distance. And as you can see, Dave is working his way closer. He's also, again, doing that dual purpose. He's getting Marvin accustomed to birds flying and actually flying our macaw Tusa over Marvin's head every now and then. And Marvin just continues to preen himself and not care. He is getting very desensitized at a young age at only four months old. The next progression that we do is we start changing up the flight pattern. So we start releasing Tusa at different times and different directions. <laughs> Tango's doing really well thus far with the progression that I actually switch sides. And so now we're trying to get a diagonal flight from Tusa, but it really scares Tango to have a bird flying from behind and in that close proximity. Tango is convinced that Tusa is going to either bump him out of the air or do something undesirable. So we call Tango back after we stop flying Tusa to entice him down and we go back to what was working. Yeah. 
slow hesitation. What would you have done? What did you do right and wrong at, in hindsight? I didn't think about the fact that it was a new place because to me it wasn't that much different because it's like, oh, we're still just flying back and forth A to B, but it's a totally different environment. He's never been in clothes like that. I probably would have wanted to do it on a day that I had higher food motivation to start off with because we had already done a flight session and a training session and he had breakfast this morning. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't really set up for success there. Um, we started at the goal. We started at the goal of doing A to B's across the whole way with Tusa flying and that, that sent it bad. So I think when we saw that, realized that had gone bad, I think going back and doing shorter A to B's, expanding it, I think we did that right, we just did it too late. I agree 100%. Does that, so, does that resonate with you? So yes. I put the purchase in all the worst spot I could. I can't see you. Dave and I have gotten, I feel, pretty good about positioning ourselves to where even if one of us isn't set up for him to land, it's motivating him to go to the other. I agree. Yeah, I agree 100% uh, with, with what she's saying. And these are things that we, we work on individually with people as well. And what you're hearing is what would worst case have been? Worst case is the bird goes to the top and sits there and we have no way of getting up there to get it. So how do we pre prepare ourselves to not have that happen? The key was starting as if it's a new trick. Short A to B's, gradually getting to where we want. That's gonna help him build his confidence and help him get to that area where he's like, oh, I got this. Isn't, and even towards the end, he was still a bit, things yeah. would spook him. So he's definitely heightened in there. But if you were going to take your bird in a batting cage, I would say same thing. You think you're fine because it's in an enclosed net. Right. What if there's a hole in the net? Right. And batting nets are even worse because when they get up there onto the net, they can't push off because there's too much give. Mm -hmm. um, and they can get to a spot where you can't reach and now they can just go to town on the net. They can just chew through the net. So I knew going into there looking at it earlier, I was like, that's not going to happen here. He can push off. It's just going to take a bit. It's going to take a bit of motivation to get to come down and do that descent. But I've seen Tango's training. I knew he was capable of actually doing it. Mm -hmm. For him, it's more overcoming the fear to do the skill that he already has. And in that location, Jamie also mentioned she knows his skill levels. So coming off of that for him, no problem. Yeah. I know Tusa is not going to go up there. Mm -hmm. But if, if Marvin went up, he doesn't have the skills yet to let go from that drop, descend, hit the top. So as you're developing skills, just kind of reflect on today and, and say, okay, what's the worst that could happen? If he goes up there, can I get him back? If it can go wrong, it typically does. Right. To treating him, there you go. He could go a little further.